Okay, so now we have our database structure in place and we've also let Laravel know about our relationships in the models. The next thing we're going to do is start seeding our database. And we're going to do a mixture of this of creating real data for our roles and then using fake data to populate some users in. And this just helps us as we're developing so we can get a feel for the application, how it's going to look and how it's going to work without having to register loads of users ourselves, which is time consuming and there isn't really any point in doing that. So in our previous video, when we created our roles model, it created a number of other things for us. So if we come under database and under seeders, we can see it's created us a role seeder.php file. And also under factories, it's created us a role factory. Now we will look at these in a little more detail shortly, but you can see here we have a user factory. Also, this is out of the box with Laravel, but we don't have a user seeder. The first thing we're going to do is just create that. So over in the terminal, we can do a PHP artisan make colon seeder, and then we can just give this a name and I'm going to call this user seeder. So now we have the user seeder file ready to work with. Let's just take a quick look at the factories first. So let's open up our user factory and you can see down here in the definition method of the user factory, it's actually creating us a user model and it's using Faker to create this fake data. So for the name, it's creating a fake name that's then injected into the application. So we can call this factory and then it will produce us a user model. So factories are a design pattern and they do pretty much what a factory would do in real life. They make things, in this case, objects. So we can actually see this in action using Laravel Tinker. So back over in our command line, let's go into Tinker. So we can do a PHP artisan Tinker. And now we can just call that factory method and Laravel puts the factory method on the model. So we can call our user model and then we can say factory and then we can pass it in the make method and this will create a user for us, but it won't store it in the database. To do that, you have to call create and we're going to be doing that inside of our seeders. But for the purpose of this, we just want to see how it actually looks when it outputs the information. So let's just hit enter on this. And you can see here now it's created us one user with a random name and a random email address. We can even step this up if we wanted to create more. So for example, after factory here, we can call count and we can say five. So make us five fake users. You can see here it's created us five different fake users and it's created random names and email addresses for them all. So we're probably not going to be using a factory for generating the roles because the roles it'll generate will be random and they might not really make sense for our application. But I'm going to show you how to create a factory for the roles. So as you expand up on this project and you create more models, you know how to then create your own factories for them. So under database factories, let's open up that role factory. As you can see at the moment, our definition method is empty. Now there's only one column on our role table anyway, and that is called name. So that's actually pretty easy to populate. So all we need to do inside of the definition is return and we want to turn an array and then for the array key, we need to give it the columns name, which in our case is also name. And then we need to set this to a value Now we can set this to whatever we want. We could set this to a string if we wanted and we just hard code a string. For example, we could say admin, but that'll create the same role every time we call this factory and it'll always come out with the role name of admin. So this isn't really very flexible for what we need. So let's just remove this and let's call Faker. Now Faker is actually on the parent model class. So we can actually just call this and then Faker and then that gives us access to the Faker library. Now inside of the Faker library, there's many different bits of information that you can create. And one of them things is called job title. So this way it creates a fake job title. Now, if you head over to the Faker GitHub page, and I'll put a link in the description for this, you can see what other types of information you can create using this library. So if you scroll down here, you can see all the different things that you can actually create. So let's take a look at address, for example. So in here, you can see the different properties that you can add on for creating fake data. So instead of calling job title, for example, you could call city and that'll generate you a random city. You can do the same for phone numbers and as we've seen in the user factory, you can also do it for emails, names, 
and just have a look at this documentation and there's probably something in there that you could use to populate your application with fake data but for now anyway this is okay for us let me just close this off with a semicolon now let's jump back into tinker and actually run this factory so now over in tinker again instead of calling that user let's call our role model and then let's call that factory method on our role model and again this is something laravel automatically puts onto your models for you and then we're going to do a count and we're going to say five for this we want it to create five and finally we're going to call mate and this mate just creates them and outputs them to the screen it doesn't actually do anything with them it doesn't store them in the database so let's just hit enter on this and as you can see here it's just created us five random job roles so we've got like an industrial engineer a musician or singer and like i said this probably doesn't really make sense for our style of application here but just let you know that factories are an option and you can create the fake data if you want instead of manually building up your roles table it's completely up to you i'll leave it down to you but i'll show you also how to hard code some values in using a database seeder later in this video so back over in our application let's open our user seeder under database seeders user seeder now what we want to do in here is pretty much what we just did in our tinker library so at the top here we just need to bring in our user model so we can say use app backslash models backslash user and then down in this run method just like the same syntax that we did inside of tinker we're going to call that user model we're going to call the factory that laravel automatically puts on that for us and we're going to call a method called times here and this is the amount of times that we want to run this so let's just for example say 10 for now so this is going to run 10 times and then we want to create so the difference here is we're calling create instead of make this actually creates that fake user object and then puts it into the database and then that's all we need to put in the run method in our user seeder the next thing let's jump over to our role seeder and that's under database seeders role seeder now again we're going to have to bring in our role model so we can do use app backslash models backslash role now that we've created that role factory we can call it in here and do exactly what we did in the user seeder so we can call role factory and then we can do times 10 and then finally create and this will use our role factory to generate some random roles like i said this doesn't really make sense to me i want to hard code my roles in so i'm actually going to use the db facade and inject database so i'm just going to comment this out and leave this here for an example in case you do want to use the random generated data now up the top I'm going to use illuminate support backslash facades backslash db now down in the run method i'm going to call that db facade and i'm going to say on my table of roles i want to insert and then we can pass in an array into this insert and then we give it the name of the columns and then the date we want to put in so we've only got one column on here and it's called name and in there i want to insert a new row with the value of admin and then that's it that'll just insert a new row into our database with the name set to admin so i'm just going to copy these down and create two more space these out and i'm going to create one called author and i'm just going to create one called user now you can give these any names you like whatever makes sense to you it doesn't really matter now the final thing we want to do is add these into our database seeder now you can run these individually from the command line i find adding them all to the database seeder is normally what most people want to do as that will call all of the seeds added into there in one go so let's just open up that file so that's under database seeders database seeder.php so as you can see here there's a commented out example of using a factory so if you didn't want to you wouldn't have to create the user seeder or the role seeder file that we have you could just call the model factories directly so i'll leave that up to you anyway but we're going to be using the seeders that we've generated because i think this is the better path because this gives you more flexibility so if you wanted to run a seeder individually then you can actually call the individual seeders where you've run this database seeder it's going to run everything inside of this run method so you do lose some of the flexibility there 
of having individual cedar classes. So under this, let's just call them cedars. So I'm going to say this, I'm going to say call, and I want to call the user cedar and then the class. And now I'm just going to copy this line down for our roles. Instead of calling our user cedar, we can call our role cedar. So now let's just try this out in our command line. So let's just exit from Tinker and let's run PHP artisan db colon seed. You can see here now that's seeded our users table and it's also seeded our roles table. So I've just logged into my SQL here now. I'm just going to do a select star from users. Do a backslash g to format it a little bit nicer. You can see here now this has inserted some test users for us. And we can do the same for the roles table just to make sure that that's worked. And you can see here now this has inserted our admin, author, and user, just like we put in our seeders file. So let's just exit out of my SQL. So back over in our command line now, I did mention that you can run individual seeders separately if you wanted to. So to do that, you can do php artisan db on seed. And then as above, that will run everything in our run method in database seeder. But we don't want to do that. We can just pass in hyphen hyphen class. And we can set this class equal to, and we can set this to our role seeder. Now let's just run this. And you can see that's just run our role seeder on its own. Now if we select star from roles again over in our database, we can see it's run our role seeder again. But it's actually duplicated the data. And that's because we didn't truncate the table so you can actually truncate the table from inside of the cedar. But because we're going to be putting foreign keys on this as well, that does cause issues down the line when you try and roll back migrations. So the best way around this is if you want to start off with a fresh database again, is to do a PHP artisan migrate colon refresh. And then on the end, put hyphen hyphen and then pass it the seed flag. Now let's run this. You can see that rolls back all our migrations. It reruns all our migrations and then reruns our seeders. So back over in our database, if we just select star from roles again, we can see now we're back down to our original three roles. So I'll pop these commands. So I'll pop these commands in the bottom of the video description. And I recommend that you always go with the PHP artisan migrate refresh hyphen hyphen seed. When you want to clear all of the seed data out of the database and refresh it with some fresh fake data. So now we have our roles and our users within the database. The final thing that we want to do is link these together in our many to many relationship. So let's create a seeder for this. So over in the terminal, I'm doing a PHP artisan make seeder, and I'm going to call this one role user seeder. Now let's open this up. Now at the top of this file, we want to bring in our roles model and our user model. So we can do a use app backslash models backslash role. Now let's copy this line down. I'll change that role to user. And down in our run method, the first thing we want to do is get all of the roles out of the database. Let's create a new variable here called roles. And that is just going to call our role model. And we're going to get all. So that will return us a collection of all of our roles. And now we want to get all of our users and populate the pivot table with one of the roles. So what we can do is we can call our user model and we want to get them all. And then again, this is a collection. So we can use the each method on this. So we can say for each of these users that were being returned, we're going to run an anonymous function on them. And we just need to pass in the user. And we also want to use the role. That should be roles, not role. And then inside of this, and then inside of this closure, we can say this current user with inside of this each loop, we can call our roles relationship. And we can say we want to attach a role to this user. Now, later on in this series, I will be explaining the attach method. And there's also a sync method that you could use in this circumstance. But for now, we'll just go with attach and I'll discuss them more in depth and what they actually do later when we come to build the admin panel and assign roles to users. So we're saying to Laravel Eloquent here, we want to attach whatever we put in here into the roles relationship on the user model. So 
So up here we've got our roles and we're passing these in here. So we can just say roles. And again, because this is a collection, we have access to the method of random. So we can say here, pick one item from this roles collection here. And then we want to hook the ID from that collection. So at the moment, we have three roles in our database. We have the admin, which is an ID of one, the author, which is an ID of two, and the user, which is an ID of three. This line here is saying, go over the roles collection that we got here with all. I want to pick one at random, so it'll just pull one out of this collection. And then we say, once we've got that one, we want to get the ID, and that will return us one, two, or three. And then once one, two, or three is in here, this will then attach that to the roles relationship on the user model. Let's just run this and see it in action. So over in our database seeder, we want to come here and we want to just duplicate this line down. And then instead of role seeder, we want role user seeder. So now let's run this. We can do a PHP artisan migrate refresh hyphen hyphen seed. Now you can see that's done the full migrations again, but now it's also done the user seeder, the role seeder, and also our new role user seeder. So let's see what that actually means within the database. What we can do is let's just make sure our users are in there. So we select star from users. I'll use backslash D to format it again. And you can see we have 10 randomly generated users. Let's just check the roles table now. And there we have our three roles. We have our admin, author, and user, all with their unique IDs. So now let's select star from our role underscore user table. And as you can see here, it's outputted the role user table for us. So in here, we have the ID of each one of our users, one through to 10. And then each of them users has a random role ID applied to them. And now in the next video, when we display our users out and what roles they've got, we can use the many to many relationship and we can say, what role does user ID of one have? And it will check this table, find that it has the role ID of one. And then it will query the role table and say, get me the role with the ID of one. And then that is how we're linking the users to roles. So we could actually apply multiple roles to a single user. So why don't you try that out in your own time? Why don't you just try random two? And that will apply two roles at random to each of the user IDs instead of one. So in the next video, let's look at actually building out our front end interface for our admin section and displaying the users out from the database.